More than 4 million years ago, the ancestors of the most unique of the 41 species of felids appeared on the earth before the first lions and leopards, the cheetah, and developed over time into the world's fastest land mammal. After millions of years of evolution, it took mankind just a blink of an eye to bring the oldest of the big cats to the edge of extinction. Today, the cheetah is the most endangered of the bigger African cats. From a count of 100,000 in 1900, their numbers have dropped to under 7,000 in the wild today and around 1,700 globally in human care. We've got some really great news. Uh, the first dart has got in. We just got some uh, radio communications from the helicopter. So the first animal has been successfully darted and it looks like uh, we're winning. So we're just waiting for that second dart to go in now. As you can see, the cheetah is about 400 meters away from us. So the helicopter is very close. And uh, yeah, they might actually come running past us now because now the, cheetah, the helicopter is obviously going to be putting a lot of pressure on the second animal. But it's looking good for now. Cheetah are classified as vulnerable on the IUCN red list due to human wildlife conflict, poaching, trophy hunting, poorly regulated captive trade and illegal pet trade. The biggest threat, however, is due to an increasing loss of habitat. Mankind's ever-expanding agricultural activity and urban development has led to a fragmentation of the cheetah's territories. So what we're doing here is we're going to put a new collar on the cheetah because uh, this existing collar is a year old. It's probably only got a few months left. So the new collar hopefully will last two years. For the best chance of survival, wild cheetah in South Africa are managed in fenced reserves and kept away from farmland. As cheetah require vast areas, most reserves only have the capacity to hold limited numbers. To prevent inbreeding once the animals produce offspring, the Endangered Wildlife Trust established the Cheetah Meta Population Project in 2011 which currently manages around 380 cheetah living in 58 protected areas. This over here is the dew claw of the cheetah. This is the main weapon of the cheetah. Very powerful and very sharp claw. It uses use to hook its prey. As you can see, the rest of the cheetah's claws are not that well developed. Its teeth are also not as well developed as lip, lion and leopard. Very small canines. Much bigger than humans, but, but very poorly developed compared to lion and leopard. The cheetah in this metapopulation project need to be artificially connected, which means adult animals or their offspring have to be physically moved between game reserves to avoid breeding between related individuals. The reason why cheetah disappeared from 93% of the historical range is, is because humans stopped being hunter-gatherers. We stopped living in balance with our environment. We domesticated goats and sheep. And uh, we brought these goats and sheep into the cheetah's habitat. And of course the cheetah were going to take them. So that's the story of cheetah around the world. Is as soon as humans brought livestock in, cheetahs came into conflict with humans. And of course humans won that conflict. Since the colonial era, cheetah were eradicated from 90% of the historical range in South Africa. And we had only two cheetah populations left in the 60s, uh, Kruger Park and the Kalahari. Since then, we've reintroduced cheetahs into 58 fenced protected areas in the country. So we've got these 58 fragmented small populations and all of them together form the meta population. So what we do is we swap individuals between these fenced reserves to prevent inbreeding. And for that reason, the meta population is a population of populations. So there has been this theory that cheetahs have been the classic textbook example of a species that went through a massive population crash, lost most of the genetic diversity and emerged with very little diversity left. But that's actually been falsified. Uh, cheetah actually have relatively healthy levels of genetic diversity. They have greater levels of genetic diversity than pumas, for example, than tigers. But we still know, despite that, that the genetic rules apply to all species, all mammal species. It doesn't matter if you're a whale or a mouse. For any mammal, you need a thousand individuals for a genetically viable population. 
and right now the meadow population stands at about 380. So we're well short of a genetically viable population. So that's why we require the assistance of the captive community to beef up our genetics, to beef up our numbers, so that we can get to that point where we have sufficient cheetahs and sufficient genetic diversity. A Shia based in Paal, just outside Cape Town, is a world-class cheetah sanctuary, certified by Fair Trade Tourism at the beginning of 2019, and is the base of a Shia's cheetah conservation program. September 2018 saw a landmark conservation achievement with the release of a captive-born cheetah as part of a groundbreaking breeding, wilding and release project set up by Ashia and Kazuka Lodge. In 2016, my husband and I, we bought this farm with the idea of setting up a sanctuary for, for cheetahs, mainly for two reasons. One is education and uh, the other one is the breeding, wilding and release of captive born cheetahs. And so the question is why did we concentrate or focus on, on cheetahs? Well, I would, or we both would like to save all the wildlife and every species. But, well, first I, I was always in love with cheetahs and when, when we learned both that uh, the cheetahs are the most endangered and vulnerable of all the big cats or all the big predators, I think the choice was made and I learned in my life that you always have to focus on one thing if you want to be successful. If you go too broad, you lose yourself, so we decided, okay, that's... Uh, we were always in love with cheetahs, that's what we focus on. But if we didn't want to stop here just having a sanctuary for cheetahs, yeah. I think what you have to do is you have to bring these cats back into the protected world. That's the best you can do as a sanctuary. Six months into the project, seven adult captive-born cheetah had been translocated to Kazuko and two females had given birth in the breeding section. The mortality rate of cheetah cubs in the wild is notoriously high for numerous reasons. Under human care and supervision, however, this decreases substantially. Ethical breeding in human care has become essential to ensure the long-term survival and viable genetic diversity of the species. What we've noticed from straight from the beginning is these cats need to be fit when they go. So for us, the biggest thing is getting them on the running machine, getting those muscles, getting them ready and not halting their process of first waiting for them to get the fitness there, but if we can prepare it here already, the amount of time that they spent in a smaller boma is so much limited. So we can now get the fitness sorted here at a shear, then pretty much two, three weeks after they've gone to the reserve, they'll be all fit and ready to start hunting. The release of captive-born cheetah into the wild is a true win for conservation on numerous fronts, with a large part of the achievement being the successful collaboration between the various stakeholders involved. So dietary requirements for the wild is basically, if you look at cats in the wild, they go hunt themselves. So they first of all get a lot of exercise and second of all they catch their prey so it's nice and fresh. They eat from the skin, the organs, the muscle, the bone, the cartilage. So basically they get everything that they need. Whereas in captivity, we can't just give them a whole carcass. We give them a piece of meat which we obviously have to supplement so that they get all those nutrition they would get from a whole antelope. So that's what we're starting here at Ashia at the moment is we're changing our cat's diet completely to mimic whatever they would do in the wild. So basically we're implementing fasting days. So the more fasting days we have, which means we have to feed them bigger pieces of meat, which means we can give them basically a small baby antelope, which they get the whole carcass. So they'll get from the skin, the cartilage, the bone, the organs, whatever they need. And we have seen a big difference in health from these cats, especially with gastritis. Gastritis plays a big role in captivity we've seen less diarrhea we've seen less vomiting and also with that we have to supplement them less it's not nice giving powder all the time on their food so it's it's good if we can give them a meal which has everything they need all at once there are a few tick boxes the cats need to tick before they can actually go one of them is the running and the fitness, the other one is addressing the diet issues to make sure that their system doesn't get bombarded with a whole new type of diet. 
The third thing is pretty much making sure all medical issues are addressed. We do genetic testing, we do blood testing, we make sure that the cat is completely medically sound to travel and to be released. Along with that comes all the paperwork, of course, all the red tape. So we make sure that all stat books are filled out correctly. We make sure that we contact EWT, the Endangered Wildlife Trust. They are part of this program and they are a big part of it. So we have to make sure that we meet their guidelines as well. The experience of Gerard de Lange and his rangers with cheetah and other big cats, as well as Kazuka Lodge's suitable terrain, convinced Ashia's team that they had found the right partner for their conservation project. Once at the reserve, the cats are initially kept in a special enclosure called a boma to allow them to acclimatize to their new surroundings. They are then released into larger wilding sections to improve their fitness and develop their hunting skills before entering the metapopulation. We looked at a couple of game reserves before. We looked at the habitat, the passion, the willingness, the skills of the people, the expertise. And one important thing was that the cats that we bring into a pre-release boma here can see from the pre-release boma the prey out there, which then kicks in their instinct for hunting. They want to leave the boma, they want to go out and hunt what they see two to three kilometers away. Well, comparing to other projects that we heard about or that people tell us, we have a recipe here which is a bit different. Usually they are released onto a big game reserve pot. Here we bring them from Alboma into, we call it a, the wilding section, which is a closely monitored, quite large area where they can develop their hunting skills and can get more muscleless. And then, only then, when they are ready, then they can go into a large game reserve. So we make a step in between as a sort of a safety net to make really sure that the cats that we release into other game reserves, large game reserves, with predators are really fit to do that. The cheetah is an umbrella species. By conserving cheetah, many other species and habitats can be protected. It is also an indicator species of a functional ecosystem and a healthy biodiverse area. You learn a lot, but I think that the, probably the first highlight was when Jasmine made her first kill, and so quickly. It was totally unexpected, because if you look at models of how people do this, I mean, it's basically everybody says it's a two-year process, and yeah, we've done it all very quickly. So every one of them, when they made their first kill, was, was a significant highlight. And it's amazing, every one of them did the same thing. They opened the carcass fantastically, they went for the cartilages, they went for the ribs, and then with all of them, within a couple of days, they started hunting. Lions are a cheetah's biggest threat in a wilderness area. A gradual introduction to them is part of the wilding program, allowing the cheetah's natural protective instincts to kick in. There's a lot of dangers out there. I mean, there's snakes and there's animals that can hurt them. I mean, they can run for the first time at full speed and they can get some injuries, and you, especially around the feet area. You can also think from, if they come from captive, the feet, it's not, it's soft but uh, they, they do adapt very quickly. Very important to feed the cheetahs. It depends how big the meat that we give him. And then we take it from there and see, okay, he's gonna last three days or four days. And what we're doing is to teach him how to survive in the bush. I think for us all involved, Kuzuka and, and Ashia, it, it's gone tremendously fast in a very short space of time. We will very shortly be in a position where we can start making genetics available to the meta population. Where to from here is to just carry on and hopefully this will open a door for other reserves to follow our example because it is an example that works. I mean, we've clearly proven it. And then just keep on, keep on getting genetics into the meta population and us as a human species, we can, we can make a difference. This is obviously um, a captive male born and raised in captivity that we've now released onto this uh, 300 hectare portion. He's hunting for himself, he's fully functional. The next phase of his rewilding now, now that we know he can hunt, will be predator saviness. Uh, he has had a little bit of exposure to, to lion. And uh, here he is walking up now. 
Last time, everyone keep very still. Stay right where you are. Let him have a space to go through here. Stay right where you are. Volunteers are offered the rare opportunity to live their conservation dream by participating in the Wilding and Release program, with time spent at a Shia sanctuary in Paul as well as at the reserve. My passion for wildlife has always been there since I was very little. I have always loved all forms of wildlife, but um, so there's always something about Africa that just I knew one day I was going to go to Africa. And when I did, I just totally fell in love with it. But realizing that there is such a need for the conservation of species that are, and not, not just cheetah, but there's tons of species here that could use some help. And I realized that while I was volunteering and just thinking, like, I, I want to be sure that generation after generation will be able to come and experience what I experienced and have their lives changed the same way mine was changed. What I think is really cool and unique about like going to a Shia and spending a week or two there, they work really closely with the cheetahs there. They work within the bomas and they're, they're working with a lot calmer, maybe tamer cheetahs. And so like the, it's a different, a totally different experience. But then they come here and they see the other side of it. So it's like they get to experience how everything they did at a Shia actually matters. Like they're, you know, they are cleaning up poop and giving them water and food and everything, but now they come here and they're like, oh, okay, well, these are wild cheetahs. They are going wild, so everything that we did there matters. And it's just, I think it's a great way to do it. You see both sides of the conservation and why both sides are important to create a better good for everything. Volunteers first work alongside sanctuary staff in PAL to get the necessary experience and training for their volunteering time at a game reserve. Depending on the stage of the yearly release efforts, they assist in accompanying the cheetah to the reserve, monitoring their BOMA period or recording their behavior, hunting and breeding successes. I came to Ashia to make a difference. I was born on a farm and we raise animals and I think it's important for me to still participate and make sure that I make a difference in the world. As I have a family and I'm growing older, I need to leave a mark and I thought that coming to Ashia would make a difference. It might be small, but it will make a big difference. And the cheetah going extinct make me feel sad because it's not the only animal, but we have to start somewhere and we need to play a big role in making sure we preserve our biodiversity and keep our earth going. We started the widening and release program in August last year and so far we are extremely happy with it and we are a bit amazed about it, how quickly it's going. Uh, a lot of people told us it's going to be impossible, we're going to fail, it's going to be a disaster and the opposite is the case. Uh, we have now seven cats there and they have produced seven young cubs, cu cubs already, two, two little. Two females, yeah. And Man, all of them are just hunting and it is amazing how quickly they become wilder and wilder and wilder. So it's, a, it's obviously a, um, a project that works and that's also our vision for the future here at the sanctuary to continue to have or to raise more and more cats and to replicate also what we have at Kuzuko. It can spread, or we hope, it will spread to other reserves and, and other people will maybe follow what we did so far very successfully. So we don't want to stop here, but really get more and more people on board. And that's also why we are so focused on our volunteer program, to get young people on board here that see what we are doing, that maybe decide to study conservation or what are animal behavior. We have all sorts of, of students here. So that this idea is, is, not, is not dying in a couple of years, but that it will spread and, and, and continue to, yeah, to give more cheetahs back to the wild. Uh, 
we uh, darted the cheetah uh, uh, about half an hour ago and we've been driving for about uh, at uh, 20 minutes now so this is about the right time to just check that these cheetah are doing okay so this is uh, you know this is something that we just do every every uh, 40 minutes of the journey just to make sure that we have no problems with the cheetah they're not entering into a fit um, because they do sometimes uh, suffer from epileptic attacks from the stress as you can imagine this, these are wild cheetahs so it's a very stressful experience so let's see how they're doing doing good they're doing very well so I think we can uh, we can hit the road again this is what half of South Africa looks like it's a semi semi desert terrain uh, a, a massive region called the Karoo this is where most of our agricultural production is so uh, in 2013 we established our first uh, a major population reserve in this area, um, 26,000 hectares, 260 square kilometers, and we put uh, three cheetah in there, a female and two males, and they did exceptionally well, and in just uh, two months I'll be fetching their first offspring, which are now ready for us to collect for relocation to, to other parts of the country. All right, it's nine o'clock in the evening here. We are driving through the center of uh, Johannesburg. Yeah, we're another we're another four hours to go before we get there, uh, which means we're slightly ahead of time. Both cheetah are doing well. I'm very relaxed in the back of a crate, and uh, really looking forward to getting them out of there. Okay, so we are finally off of the tar road and back on the ground road and uh, we've got about uh, 50 kilometers of ground road to go before we finally get there. Then it's just a case of taking the cheetah to a release boma and we do this because uh, cats have a homing instinct while a cheetah has a homing instinct just like a domestic cat does. So uh, if you don't put them into the release boba, they simply walk back to where they, they came from. And as you can see from the journey that we took today, you know, there's no way that cheetah will, will get back, these cheetah will, will get back to, to where they originally came from. Where these two cheetah came from, uh, there's, there's no spotted hyena and no lion, but they were leopard. Here they are spotted hyena, lion and leopard. So these guys are gonna, are gonna for the first time they're gonna see lion and spotted hyenas. And um, so we would prefer it if they, if they met lion and spotted hyena while they were still in the boma, while they at least behind a, a nice electric fence to protect them from those animals and to realize that those animals are out there to get them. Um, because 30% uh, of cheetah mortalities are due to lion and another 6% due to spotted hyena. The meta population has grown on average by 13 individuals per year since its establishment yeah, in 2011. The current number of 380 animals still leaves the meta population well short of a genetically viable minimum of 1,000 animals. The current 58 reserves can sustain approximately 500 cheetah. Bringing more captive born and successfully wilded cheetah onto these reserves will enable EWT to translocate cheetah from the meta population into free ranging populations of southern Africa and to strengthen their numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think that we can reverse the decline in wild cheetah populations. There's a lot of safe space out there for cheetah. There's a lot of areas where we can reintroduce them. That's despite the economic growth on the continent, despite human population growth, there are still a lot of safe spaces for cheetah. And if we manage them responsibly from a genetic perspective, then we can certainly increase their populations. And we've seen that happen in South Africa and in Malawi, where we've adopted this meta-population approach. 
And the only two countries that have adopted the metapopulation approach are South Africa and Malawi, and they are the only two countries where we're finding more safe space for cheetah and where cheetah numbers are, are increasing while cheetah numbers are increasing. It is partnerships like this one that have broken the bounds of conventional conservation. This is only the beginning, however. During the making of this documentary, discussions have begun with other game reserves and a conservation fund to replicate this model, which so far has been highly successful on all counts. Ashia and Kazuko will go to whatever lengths are necessary to wild as many cheetah as possible and to share the invaluable expertise they have gained through this groundbreaking project.